Hello, I'm High Hill Knight. Welcome to my channel. This is my review of American Fright Fest. I give the movie a B plus. The movie is a 2018 film about a horror festival that's open to the public and when folks go to visit the festival they find out that the blood, gore, and terror is real and they must do what their best to survive the night and escape the killer psychopaths stalking them. If that sounds a lot like Hellfest or even Bloodfest, then you're not mistaken. It's not unusual in Hollywood for copycat movies to come along in which the uh, premise is the same like with Deep Impact and Armageddon. However, as far as I know, this is the first time that three movies came out in the same year with the same basic premise and all with the same basic naming device. That device being Scary Noun plus Fest. In fact, American Fright Fest was originally just called Fright Fest. And I imagine that it was changed either to differentiate it from the other uh, Scary Now Fest movies or so the uh, movie wouldn't get sued by Six Flags because they actually have a Fright Fest uh, as part of their annual celebration. But whatever the case, this is how this review will work. I will mention two things I liked about the movie. I'll mention two things that I did not like about the movie. And then I will discuss what I liked about this movie above the other two Scary Now Fest films. And then, of course, I'll get my verdict. So with that said, let's see how this fest stands from the rest. One of the things I loved about this movie was Dylan Walsh's performance. He plays this absolute slime ball of a horror director who is at the end of his rope. He is an alcoholic. He is a drug addict. He's had three DOIs. He's barely making any money. So he takes the horror fest gig just to get some funds going his way. But from beginning to end, you don't like him. You're never supposed to like him. And he just becomes more and more and more of a degenerate as the movie progresses. As he's watching the carnage from the safety of his control box, he's just going nuts with both euphoria for how uh, this might resurrect his career, as well as the burden of knowing that all these people are dying. He's just unraveling before you and he plays the role absolutely perfectly there is no arcing uh, redemption at all he is a total total slime ball the other thing i liked about this movie is that i was a lot more invested with the protagonist than i normally am in the horror movies with the uh, protagonist being employees i am more invested with them because you're not just sitting around waiting for them to die in fact because they're employees they're only in the movie as much as needed. We get introduced to them, then the festival starts, and then they go on to their own corners of the world, and they don't come back into the story when it's time for something important to happen, when it's time for some type of meaningful death. Uh, so that's something I appreciate. Uh, these aren't just some random victims who went to the wrong festival or cabin or hotel or what have you, you know. There's a reason why these folks are there, and because uh, they are not awful people. In fact, a lot of these horror movies they always have that one jerk character or that moron or that fool that you just can't wait to see kill. Now, these folks here are not the pillars of the community, but at the same time, they're not bad people. So yeah, I'm a little more invested in wondering how these folks who are just there to do a job are going to survive as opposed to the other dozens or so what horror movies where you know you're just waiting and waiting it doesn't matter how cool or interesting how wonderful those characters are you know they're going to die so you're just waiting for them to see how they're going to die i like being able to be a little more invested in these protagonist characters than usually with the uh, horror movies as far as negatives uh i'm not holding the fact that this movie is an incredibly low budget film against itself I mean, this movie is flying so far under the radar that at the time of this recording, there isn't a Wikipedia page for it, okay? That's how barely known this film is. So the fact that this low budget, I'm not going to hold that against here. But I am going to say that I wish the uh, movie had some type of resolution uh, once the story finishes. Uh, the MCU movies have sort of made it cliche to have some type of after credits or mid credits scene, but in this case, it really would have been helpful. I would have liked to see how things that played out, I fought out, considering who died, considering who survived, and considering uh, what had to be bound the aftermath of this event. So yeah, I would have liked uh, some type of uh, more resolution footage uh, going into the 
exit of the movie as the credits are rolling or, you know, just something a little extra to say, hey, this was the fallout of all this uh, zaniness and craziness. The other part of the movie that I didn't really like is that it seems to be wanting to be a sort of a hard PG-13 because there is a lot of death, there is a lot of alcohol and drug abuse, but at the same time, the blood and gore is at sort of a minimum. Like most of the time when there's a death, like the uh, psychopath will like swing the axe and then it'll cut to a shot of blood spatter and then you'll see the victim fall or uh, someone like they're about to be impaled. So you see from the back when they turn around, you see the impalement as opposed to really digging it in and being gory. Now, I don't know if that's the case of the uh, lack of budget. I don't know if they figured it'd be easier to trim the movie once it's uh, hopefully goes to like a, the sci-fi network and all those other avenues. But yeah, it's just weird, especially since the language, the language, you know, all that uh, R-rated either. They just dropped a couple of uh, uh, curses here and there. So it's like, well, this movie's unrated, so just go the full route. You're an independent movie. Do what you want to do. You Once you have drug and alcohol and lots of uh, death and mayhem, you might as well just fully embrace that R rating. So yeah, I don't know why this movie seems to be one some type of weird, strong PG-13, uh, but that was just really uh, off-putting for me. You know, go, like, go full, you know, or go home. <laughs> I would need a flow chart to try to explain how each Scary Now and Fest movie is the same and different from each other. Now, I did do a comparison movie between Bluffest and Hellfest, and I'll leave a link to the description, but I didn't know about American Hellfest until about a month after I made that video, So, which is why I'm doing this video for this movie. Now, instead of trying to directly compare everything to each movie, I'm just going to say what I liked about American Fright Fest uh, above the other two Scary Now Fest movies, and that there's a wonderful balance of meaningful death and random victim death. In Blood Fest, you're introduced to this giant carnival of craziness, and yet we only follow these like six people. You know, we're told off camera that you know, uh, thousands of people are being killed and maimed and murdered, and there's chaos everywhere. Well, show it to me, you know? <laughs> you know, show, don't tell. Don't, don't tell me that there are hundreds of people dying and trying to survive. Show it to me. Why have this giant realm if it's going to follow these six people? And with Hellfest, now they do use the uh, big event a little better, but at the same time, we're just following some small group. And worst of all, this small group has no connection to the killer, has no connection to uh, the lore. They're just random people who randomly encounter the killer. And so that killer just randomly decides to chase them. And again, you got this giant festival of people and next to no one dies except for those main folks. Whereas in American Fright Fest, you have the protagonists who are these employees who you don't see until it's time for them to come back to the story. And when they come back, they have some type of interesting, meaningful death or they move the story along. And in the meantime, you have all the people who just, you know, random folks just getting killed randomly. It makes much more sense to have the random deaths with the random people that you care absolutely nothing about or they're, you know, they're totally nameless. They're just folks that just happen to get caught up by the killer. That's something that satisfied me so much. So I get a nice balance. I get this wonderful setting where anything can happen at any time with all types of craziness and chaos and, and villainy. And sometimes it's a meaningful character to introduce. Sometimes it's some random guy that happens to walk by. Sometimes it's just folks that you just see for an instant and they're totally dead. That was so much satisfying than just following a small group of people in this giant environment. So yes, when it comes to... Uh, what makes this festival stand out from the other uh, Scary Now Fest movies is definitely balance of meaningful deaths and random crazy chaos death. Bravo. Even though I'm giving this movie a high grade, I'm not suggesting that it's a great movie. It's not a great movie, not at all. But I like low budget films that are done well, or at least done enough that I'm not like, hating my experience coming out of the movie. I like a movie that makes uh, an interesting premise, does what it can with the limited budget, limited resources, limited talents uh, it has, and giving something interesting. And also, along with uh, Dylan Walsh's amazing performance, 
you get those characters that while aren't great people, you're not waiting around for them to get killed. You know they probably are, but they come in and out of the movie enough that uh, you get invested with them, and when they do die or do move the fray along, it's meaningful. As well as giving you those, those random, crazy, chaotic, oh my goodness, he could be around any corner deaths. Wonderful balance on that front. So yeah, it's not a great movie. If you want something with more production value, then definitely check out uh, Hellfest or Bloodfest. But if you like me, you appreciate the small films, you appreciate folks just doing their best, and you want to have a wonderful balance of carnage, then you should check out American Fright Fest. And that is why the movie gets a B plus from me. Okay, that was my review for American Fight Fest. Be sure to share whatever comments you like in the comment section. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe, or dislike, share, and subscribe. Once again, I High Hill Knight. Remember, find inspiration everywhere.